Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. Right, first of all, before I go any further, I'd like to say a massive, massive thank you to all my subscribers that have got me above the 1,000 subscribers mark. So that's fantastic. It's a great feeling. It means, it means a big deal to me. So uh, again, thanks to everybody who's uh, enabled it to happen. Right now, this video is on, I've done one recently uh, on the Colour View cameras, the new firmware that was released, enabling the LEDs to be switched by movement. But since doing that, I've, I thought I might do this one, just a more sort of elementary one and a generic one on probably any sort of hike vision cameras, because it applies to the old dome ones I had and the turret ones and everything. And it's just about purely and simply on how to access the actual recordings your cameras have made in the playback mode and then how to download them to your PC or onto a USB stick or whatever because if something happened and uh, the police came around or whatever they, they'd ask for the footage on a USB stick and it's not that intuitive on how to do it. Now as I've said before Hike Vision make some fantastic hardware but the software and the firmware is a bit sort of clunky. They don't release firmwares that uh, firmware updates that often, and the, the software they use, like the VS Player, and that has got its problems. And the viewer, the the you get the web viewer that you use to uh, to, to view all your, your live footage and your recorded footage, is designed to run on Internet Explorer. And there are compatibility problems with Firefox and Chrome and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do in this video is just show you how you can access from a web browser your NVR and view all your recorded files and download them from the internet. So basically from anywhere with an internet connection. And a couple of add-ons for Firefox and Google Chrome that enable it to run in Internet Explorer compatibility mode so you can access your NVR. And then once we're in there, I'm just going to explain all the icons around the screen, showing you what they do on the live view, and then we're going to go into the um, playback screen to show you how you uh, access each individual camera to play back whatever it's recorded, find it whatever it's recorded by date and time, or scrubbing along the timeline and then once you've found the footage you're interested in how to download it to your PC and then once it's downloaded how to convert it into a file that will play on any media player because again as I mentioned before Hike Vision for some reason they make their MP4s unplayable on Windows Media Player and many other uh, media players there's only VL, uh, is it VL, VLS, VLC, whatever it's called, <laughs> media player or play it and their own VS player. But there is a way of converting it within VS player into an MP3, MP4 that will play on any media player. Now it is quite a long video as most of mine are. I know I do waffle on a bit. Sorry about that. But I do take things really slowly with where to click and don't rush through. So hopefully you can keep up because that's the sort of tutorial videos I like where people take it nice and steady. There is a bit where I do linger in the middle on a very interesting piece of footage from last night that I'm using an example. A visitor I had to our front garden last night. So keep watching about that. But if you find it's going on a bit too long, just, just skip along. I'm going to put the red bar timeline bar on the video so you can skip through the bits you don't want to watch and uh, hopefully it will be of some use for you so let's go straight into it now okay so the first thing you need to know is your web address your ip address of your nvr to type in to look at it through the web browser now if you don't know what this is you can either get it by looking at the the menu from your monitor plugged directly into the nvr so uh, where your nvr is the the lead coming out the back 
into the into the monitor that you normally set it all up with you can get it from there and it's in one of the menus and it's ipv4 or you can do it from your pc by using a program called sadp which is hike vision's own program and it stands for search active devices protocol and it's this program here and if you download it and bring it up it searches your network and comes up with all the info on your nvr so if we click here i do you see here on the right this is all the info i need on my nvr the serial number the port and, and everything and here is its ipv4 address and that's what you type into your web browser to bring it up the login screen for your nvr surf so if you make a note of that and type that down you then type that in to your web browser so we'll close that now exit from that now it's designed to run on internet explorer which as you'll know is getting a bit long in the tooth now and you'll find that when you put that web address in just a standard google or sorry standard google chrome or firefox which is what i use what you'll get is this so i'm on firefox now if i just type my nvrs web address which we've just got from that SADP tool if I just type that in there now I get the login screen and if I put my password in and try and log in this is what you'll get you'll get this screen saying please click here you'll have no doubt tried this to download and install the plugin you click there it downloads the plugin it installs the plugin and it still doesn't work it's a total waste of time that it'll do that on google chrome as well so what you need to do is make either your google chrome or firefox compatible with internet explorer and there are add-ons to do that so what you do is i will put the links to these um, in the description down below but if you go onto this website here and like i said i'll put this this link here it's an open in internet explorer add-on and if you see up here on the right hand side in your tools there that little symbol open in internet explorer if i click that it will this will open in internet explorer as i'll show you shortly also on chrome i'll just open chrome if i put my um web ipv4 address in there and did the same the same screen had come up need to download but for, again forget about that you need to put the internet explorer add-on which I've already done, it's here, see? And that is this site here. It's an Internet Explorer tab. This little thing here, and that, that appears up here. And when you click on them, you will be able to gain access. So again, I'll put links for both of these in the description below. But if we go back onto Firefox, where we were. So like I said, that's the screen you'll get up. But... That's what it's trying to open. If I click up here now, I've installed that add-on opened in Internet Explorer. And we do that again. Admin. And log in. Oops. Gone. And as you can see now, we're now into the NVR, no problem. Now, a lot of these symbols can be sort of quite confusing at first. So I'll, I'll just go through a few of these. 
these are my five cameras now this little setting here mainstream or substream what that means is that the cameras and even the older dome cameras i had and the turret camera so i'm not sure this applies to every single hike vision camera out there i don't know but i would think the vast majority of they're capable of trans putting out two streams one of them is the high definition the full quality one that you use for recording and that and you watch on the playback and there's also a lower quality one lower resolution one called the substream that is output to this view or your phone on your smartphone the reason being if it was output in the full mainstream in the full five megapixel whatever four megapixel full resolution that can take quite a lot of bandwidth up and your phone is really slow viewing these screens and you don't need on a small screen like a phone a really really high resolution picture so that's why you can select either mainstream or substream and you can select that here which one you are viewing now again on a screen like this it, it only applies to this this view here if you double click as i'll show you shortly it doesn't matter whether we're on um, subscreen or mainstream here it shows you the full resolution image so i would suggest you leave these on substream the picture is fine on this small um, box layout and it's perfectly sufficient to uh, to view them at hand it'll uh, it'll load up quicker and, and take less of your uh, internet so to actually see each camera what we can do is you can see that box is highlighted yellow there and then we click on that that is highlighted we can either separately load each camera by clicking on the box and then clicking on the camera here and that will load the front west camera into that box we can then click on that box and load whatever camera we like and click on that so you can lay them out in whatever order you like or if you just want it to automatically populate these squares we click that little symbol down there there on the bottom right start all live view this one here on the left first of all if we click on that that's how many boxes you can see on screen now i've got five cameras so you have a choice of just one box, that one big box there, four there, nine there, is it nine, yeah, or 16, I think, there. Obviously, I've got five cameras, so the two by two screen, one of them will be missing, so I'm having to view it on that. So select this screen for how many cameras you have first of all and then like i say if we click down here in the bottom right hand side start all live view if we click that that will populate each individual box in time with the camera it takes a bit to load up so once you've clicked that just sit patiently for a, a minute or so while it uh, loads that screen up as you can see now it's uh, showing all screens and I'll just show you the resolution, what I mean. These resolutions here just apply to this, these small views here. So if you look, if you take a look there along them lines, this is probably going to be the easiest comparison. You can see the little zigzags on the shed there. You can see the little zigzags due to the low resolution. But if I click, so this is the back camera, if I click on mainstream for that, takes a bit, you can see them zigzags have gone. That is a much higher resolution picture. And you can see on the back camera, the little one has appeared instead of two. And I'll show you that it makes no difference once you double click on it. If I double click on that now to, show, to increase it to full size, Again, you can see that's showing full resolution. If I exit, 
if I turn it back to substream, you can see the little two has appeared now and that resolution has gone down. You can see there's more zigzags appeared. And yet if I double click it again, you can see it's just the same. It's a full resolution picture. So once it's expanded, it's showing you at the full resolution. So it is only just that screen. To escape from this full screen, just click escape on your keyboard. So double click to access it and then escape on your keyboard to do it. You can see this picture here looks sort of quite sort of low resolution on here. But once we double click it, it's pretty high it's very bright now because i've got mainly the, the settings set for uh, for night time and click escape to escape so that's these controls on the on the left here your ha your substream and your mainstream and like i see on here on the left we've got the how many squares there are on the screen this is to set the mainstream and substream for each individual one this is to turn on the mic for two-way communication. Now, I haven't got a mic on my PC set up or anything, and there's no speaker. There's no facility in these cameras for a, a speaker output. Um, I did try it once with my old dome cameras, and it wasn't a great success. I was getting feedback in that. So they have got a built-in microphone, the Colour View cams, but you can't speak to them. You couldn't, like speak to the postman saying leave leave the parcel on the on the doorstep or whatever and this symbol here um it is again linked linked in with with that so these on the right this one here i've already shown you it's the uh, start and stop all the live view if i click it now it will stop all the live view this one here capture that's just the Capture succeeded and that has downloaded it to my specified folder. Again, I'll show you that in a second. Close that down. That's just capturing a still. If we want to record instantly from all five cameras, you would click that start all recording. And again, if I click that now, all cameras are now recording click it off and they've all and the recording is succeeded and that downloads again to the record files folder that I have specified on my PC these ones here uh, enable pan tilt zoom obviously these color view cameras aren't um, pan tilt zoom so that's irrelevant as are all these controls up, up here for pan tilt and zoom they don't apply. This one here is your sound. So you click on that, turn up the sound, and that is the sound of the camera selected with the yellow box here. So that's my side camera. These four here, front west, front east, back and side, are colour view cameras with a built-in mic. This one here, the garage one, is one of the older 5 megapixel turret cameras. That hasn't got a built-in mic, so I have no sound facility on that. If you want to listen to, say, the front one, if I click on that now, even though that's highlighted yellow, we're still listening to the side one. And you'll notice down here, the mute button has gone up. We need to click that again and turn it up. And we're now listening to the front west one. And again, if I click on the back here, that's highlighted yellow now. But we are actually still connected sound-wise to the front west one. But you'll see the icon down here has gone with the red warning thing on mute. If we turn that up, we are now listening we've now transferred to the back one and if I open the door to the shed where I am recording this you can see it open and if I shut it you can hear that 
you should pick me up. One, two, three. One, two, three. three. So that's uh, showing that. So your your controls here. Now, them files I mentioned earlier on, the capture and the instant record. I just we'll just mute that. We don't need the sound on. So when you click capture there, and when we click record, capture is still, and when we click record. That downloads it to the folder of your choice, as do the downloaded files that we'll be doing shortly from the playback screen. And where they are, are you click configuration, and local here at the top, local, and all these boxes here are where I have selected to download. So you can select the recording file size. I just left it here at 512. So I would imagine once it, it, any recorded file gets to that size, it will split it into two or whatever. And I've set it to save the record files. That's that re little record button we just saw then from the live screen to here. My D drive, CCTV footage folder, record files. If you want to change that you click browse and select the folder you want them to be saved in the downloaded files that applies to ones we're going to be doing shortly the actual files we want to download to put on say a, a USB stick for the police something like that, or to save elsewhere I've selected a folder called downloaded files there and here your picture and your these uh, snapshots, playback, all that, all that is when you're in your, your playback view. You can select different folders to hold each one. So I've just called the foot folders the same as these. Save snapshots in live view to... Sorry, that was the, the live view we saw. Any snapshot would be saved to there. And so on. That's self-explanatory, really. So if we go back now where we were, live view... Click down here, show all. As soon as you leave the live view screen, it goes off. That's saying it'd be helpful if it just remembered the settings again, but it doesn't. But you've got to click that. And as you can see, it takes a few seconds for that to all load up. So we'll now go. So that's, I think that explains about everything on the, the live view side of it. Like I say, if you want to see them, Full screen, if you just clicked on that, you could double click and see absolutely full screen. Or if you just had that yellow box selected there and click down there and click one, you're now just seeing that one screen. There, it's gone from the sub stream to the, the full resolution view, as you saw. And then we go back to our three by three grid. So, what we want to do now is obviously go on to the playback see what we've recorded through the night or any selectable date so if we click playback there we're now in the playback screen and you can see down here a stripe has appeared indicating a timeline now I'm not a hundred percent what asynchronous and synchronous totally mean but it only seems to work properly on asynchronous synchronous is continuously real-time playing i've looked up the definitions of this but i haven't found anything specific to this and asynchronous is where it it leaps from recorded bit to the next recorded bit so you'll find you'll be watching it on asynchronous so if you click on that little one there the left hand one and these are the the cameras we want to watch if i click there front west this playback line is applying to the front west camera if i click on that one front east all these little pink bits are 
the bits recorded by the front east camera and so on you could populate all these things set that as channel one click on that set that as channel two set that as channel three set that as channel four and set that as channel five in any order you like and then when you click on these boxes you'll see at the bottom the timeline alters for different recorded bits from each camera so what we want to do as you see there there's loads of these little pink dashes and they're all the bits that have been recorded detecting movement and recording right on the extreme right of the timeline this little plus and little minus sign expands it out as you can see this is representing a time here a date and a time 2021 april the 9th that's today's date as i'm recording this at 23 minutes past noon as i move this around these are the recorded files that it's picking up it's now gone down to last night the 8th at 11 o'clock and so on so if you want to skip time pretty quickly if you leave the handed out like this because from there to there is representing one hour so 2200 hours 2100 hours but if you want to be a bit more accurate if we click these little expansion things on the right hand side plus and minus that expands the timeline out so you've got to move it a lot further for time as you see now from there 2055 to there 2050 is five minutes now whereas before it was about an hour but it gives you a more easy way of accessing a particular point in time so like i say you'd sweep you'd, you'd zoom right out of the timeline to locate roughly so if we were interested in something that happened last night at say eight o'clock you'd go around about to the eight o'clock mark and then click these settings to expand it out and you can see it recorded something then between eight o'clock and just for 30 seconds recording so that's how you do that and like i say it only applies once you select the individual screen for it so let's say i'm interested in something that i suspect happened last night um you'll find this quite a quite a nice piece of uh, video here because this is genuinely something that that happened last night and it was on my front east camera so again i've selected that I was on that box and i just selected front east so that has made that box front east now happened last night or early hours yeah the early hours of the 8th so yesterday so i can drag down here to the 8th we can also search a certain time so either like i say you can drag around here and you can see the timeline moving so i would expand out and like i said i'm interested in 2 51 in the morning of the 8th of april so you can drag right down here to we can see things were going on here around about 2 51 so you can either do it that method or you can select a date up here on the right and a time down here and you can search for anything that happened on a particular date it depends on how many dates have got saved depending on the size of your hard drive in your nvr with my five cameras i find i can get up to sort of like about three weeks or a month or so of recordings just for triggered by movement so we'll do it this way, method manually so again i'll zoom in a bit here and i know that what i'm interested in happened here around about 2 
52.51. So as we get towards up here, if we click this button here, play, we will start playing it in this screen. But obviously we want to see it a bit bigger. So we'll just select one screen. So this is just viewing that one camera now of the front east. And as you can see, I had the wrong one selected there. And it has now skipped away from where I'd gone. So we'll now go back down. I'm leaving these mistakes in because this is sort of mistakes people can make. I'm not editing these out and just showing it. Or I'm editing out or my many, many coughs and uh, slurps of coffee and things like that. So again, well, we're trying to find the 8th of April at 02.51. Here we are. Zoom in a bit more. Once you're near the time, you can zoom sort of fully in. So, double check, we're on front east. Yes, that's the camera we want. We're at, down here, we've selected one screen. So yes, we're going to be able to see it just on this one screen. And we've dragged the timeline to the date here. 2021, April the 8th at 02.51 seconds. So, first of all, just before that, we'll just select there and go before. Now, we're going to start playing that, that file. And it jumps straight to it. And I saw that thing going down the path. And I thought it was a cat at first. And again, this shows how good. There's something there at the top as well. You can see it just leaped on there. That's the same. Now here, look at this. It's a fox. And it's heading for this hedgehog. Do not worry, it's going to be safe. I would not show something like that on YouTube. I was afraid it was going to attack it, but no. It just gives it a good sniff. Oh, I didn't have the sound on. Again, if you turn the sound up. And if we listen now. There's some sort of noise then, like a growl. And I assume it's the uh, the fox sort of growling. And as you can see on the timeline, it then skips to the next recorded movement bit. Here's the hedgehog. It's totally survived. So we can stop it there. And if we move back earlier on, click play again. So remember 246, it's on a different camera. So we'll click stop there. We now want to see the front west camera at 246. So front west, we're on one screen, but it's now selected all the recordings made by the front west camera. And again, it goes up to the uh, date. It doesn't stay at that same date. You've got to uh, select it again. So again, we go down to the 8th of April at 02.51 when the fox was about, round about there. Zoom in a bit more. And click play. And here we see, and here this is a cat. And there's the fox. And they're having a bit like the cat's back is going up. Let's see if we've got any sound on this. It's lying down in the middle of the road now. The fox is having a sniff around the gutter. All it's picking up is wind noise. 
but you can see how effective again these color view cameras are you wouldn't really see that much on a, an infrared one because it'd be quite a way off the infrared emitter the fox is giving the cat a good look now the cat's staying absolutely silent and still hope you don't mind watching this little bit but uh, I find it fascinating fast forward this if <laughs> And basically the cat is just keeping its eye on this fox. And the fox is just sniffing around the guttering. Leaving its mark, no doubt. I'm always blaming the cats for pooing in my garden, but uh, maybe it's uh, it's the fox. As you can see, it jumps to the next recorded bit down here at the timeline. It's getting a bit closer to the, the cat now. The cat's still not making a move though. I think they're eyeing each other up. They're down here at the timeline, it's reached the end of that, and then it takes it. It does take this bit. Whether this is because of the. Sorry about that noise, it's the uh, air freshener in the room. Whether it's because of the hard drives, just the conventional spinny disc hard drives. And there the fox goes off, wandering over into the other camera. And that's where you see it appear in our garden. But the cat is just still there. Oh no, no, it's coming back. It's coming back over there. Cat's following it now. And it sh appears on the other camera in front in the in the front garden. If I whiz it along to there now. Let's see what's happening. It's come back. It was, I think it was 251 it appeared in my garden. So, yeah, it comes wandering back first. Goes behind the car, goes in next door's garden. But, like I say, you wouldn't, you'd hardly see any of this with conventional infrared type cameras, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think. Not, certainly not in the range, like right down the street here. And that. Anyway, enough of that. So, so that's that. So we've we've seen our recorded footage now, and we want to download it because we've seen something suspicious or whatever, or and we want to put it on a USB stick for the police. What we do is this button here, download. So you make a note of the time and the date. So as we know, it's April the eighth, twenty twenty one. 0303 well the other one was 251 and it was on the front east camera so what we'll do we'll go into download it doesn't matter which camera you want to download at this stage you can download it from this screen it asks you which camera shortly oh there's the hedgehog that survived so <laughs> glad to see it left it alone so Okay, we'll pause that there. So if we click here, the download button. Again, if you go on that one full screen, we go on full screen, but with no timeline controls, you just press escape to escape that full screen. If we click on here, download. So this is the download screen now. And it's asking you what file you want to download. All these are the recorded files and the dates and the times and the size that it recorded. So we're interested in the front east camera. So this box here is where you select which camera's footage you want to download. We select front east. 
file type I'm not sure what that is it's uh, all the uh, all the files captured by that camera of a certain time so if it's various things you can just set enough when it set the alarm off you could select that but if you just leave that on all type and if we click on here you can click on what I usually do is click on the calendar symbol here so this is the start time and the end time of the footage you want to download so we're only interested in what happened round about 0251 on the 8th of April so click on this symbol here and here's where you select your date the top buttons are to zoom up and down monthly and yearly so if we click the first month and that one that goes back by years so we want to be into 2021 April it's highlighted now showing the date today's date which is announced that we want the 8th and remember this is the start time so we want it any recording made between certain times so we want it to start at as you click here this box automatically opens so you can click 2 if we click there you can select in 5 minute increments or if you want to be exact you can just type it in so we're just interested in 0251 so anything that happened at 0251 it will download that segment of recording even if it started at 0250 till 0253 when it was recording for say for four minutes non-stop as long as we type in 0251 there it will download that bit click OK and again the end time 8 8th of April 02 say 50 so anything between 0251 and 0253 on that date click OK and then you can double check 2021 April the 8th at 0251 till April the 8th at 02 so anything in that 3 or 4 minute period you click search and it comes up with these two files here so this was a recording from 0251 and 48 seconds to 0252 and 21 seconds and this was from 0253 and 21 seconds to 0253 and 40 seconds just a 19 second recording there and the size of each one so we're just interested in this one here so click that one and if we click download that will now download it to the folder that I chose earlier on in up here in configuration then local and then create a folder on your PC where you want to save these downloaded files to so if I click download now it's almost instant because it's a very small file size again it will depend on the speed of your processor and, and things like that so we've, ne we've now downloaded that one file to the specified folder so we can click that now obviously if you wanted views from any other cameras you'd select that and do exactly the same process we can close that down now I don't think there's anything on the playback and record playback and download screens that I haven't um, mentioned already. So what we do now, we can shrink that down, and we can look on our PC for that downloaded file, and I've saved it here in. CCTV footage, and like I say, these are all the clips, record clips, snapshots, blah 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 blah. Video of guy at the back delivering letter that I saved, stuff like that. So it's downloaded files. 
Now, as I click downloaded files, it puts a date stamp on all the files you've downloaded on that particular day. Now, it's the day you downloaded it, not the date of the recording. So, today's date is the 9th of April. That's the one we have just downloaded today. We downloaded it at 12.09, two minutes ago. So, that is the one we're after. So if we click that, this is that downloaded file. Now, as you probably know, for some reason, Hikvision, don't, the downloads are not just standard MP4s. It's got .mp4 after it, but if you try playing it with most players like Windows Media Player and stuff like that, it will not play it. So yeah, if you try and open it, all you get is this, the file isn't playable, it may be corrupt and, and all that. It's not corrupt, it's Hikvision have put their own algorithm or whatever you call it on it. And it'll only play in their VS player or a few other players. VLC media player works, um, but most of them don't. So you would have to right click and then open with... And you could go down far. So, like I say, if I try all these, most of these things, even Power DVD, it won't play. Windows Media Player, VLC Media Player. We'll try that. It will play in that. Yeah. So, VLC Media Player will play it. And also, VS Player. So we've downloaded that file and then we've cut and pasted it from the normal download location to a more convenient folder. I've just entitled Fox on the desktop. So you can play it with Hikvision's VS Player or VLC Media Player and maybe one or two others I haven't tried but the vast majority they do struggle to play them as I've uh, explained. But we'll use Hikvision's own VS player now. And you can get that here from Hikvision's website. Again, I'll put a link to that in the description. But if we open up VS player now, we can play it through that and we can also convert it through that. Now, you can also convert a lot quicker and a lot more intuitively through Handbrake, a program called Handbrake, as I mentioned before. I'll put a link to it above now. And that is a much nicer program, I think, and it's much quicker. And if you're downloading a lot of files or large files, it can take advantage of your graphics card capability. And it is way, way faster than VS Player. Like I say, the link ab above is a, a, a comparison test I did with both of them. But for now, I'll just do it through VS Player. And once you've opened it up, VS Player, you can either click Open File here and search for that file, or you can just drag and drop it into it, and then you can convert from there. So I'm going to create a folder in that same Fox folder now, and just call it Converted. So that's that. So I'm going to drag that downloaded file from the MVR onto there. And as you can see, it's playing that fine. So I'm going to click pause now. And if we right click on the screen and select convert, So that's the file we're going to convert. We select the format we want. I'm just going to select, keep it as an MP4, but this time it'll be an MP4 that you can play in any, any player. And we're going to browse to the folder where we want it stored, which is desktop Fox converted. So select that folder. So it's going to save it there, and if we click Start, 
that's now converting it from Hikvision's, Hikvision's idea of an MP4, which plays on hardly anything, to an MP4 which will play on anything. Excuse the background noise, the fans ramp up to full speed when the processor's doing its work. It's a fast processor, a Ryzen 9 3900XT, and 64 gig of RAM and everything, so it's a pretty fast PC and it converts quite quick. So it'll depend on your processor how quick things are converted, but this VS can, uh, player is a lot slower than Handbrake and that, but I thought I'd show it you on this just to show it does work. So we've now converted it. We can now close that down. And in here, we've got that file. So just to show you, the original one, which is, if we click Properties, look, it's just coming up as... Where are we? An MP4 file. Dot .mp4. And if we try to play that with standard media player, nothing. But the converted one, if we click that, that is now playing no problem whatsoever in Windows Media Player. So we've now got a file, close that down, that we can put on an MP on a, a USB stick and pass it to the police or whatever. So uh, that's it. I think we've been through everything. Um, looking at the live screen, looking at the playback screen, picking a file to download, selecting the start, stop time, the date, and converting it. Okay, so hopefully that was of some use to anybody in my boat who is totally mystified by a lot of the aspects of CCTV. <laughs> like I said before, all I know is the absolute tip of the iceberg when it comes to all this internet protocol stuff and setting up networks and all that, most of it's straight over my head. But as long as I can get them to work and access my footage and fantastic footage it is from the colour view cameras and download it and convert it, that's all I need. And hopefully in doing this video, uh, it's been out to anybody in the same boat as me that's mystified a bit by it all. So, if you do want to subscribe, click the little icon here of the shed. There'll be loads more videos in the pipeline on tool reviews, gadget reviews, on the MG EV electric car, 3D printing, CCTV, if anything new comes along. And uh, hopefully, like I say, anything techie that takes my uh, fancy i'll do a video on it so once again thanks to all the subscribers getting me above a thousand long may it continue see you for the next one soon bye for now